Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and today we're talking about getting started for your Nurgle army. This is something I've wanted to do for a while. A lot of people ask this question, and I thought I would put out a guide that answers uh, a lot of the common questions that I see pop up when people are thinking about getting into Nurgle. So... Um, starting right off at the top, I'm going to talk more a little bit, touching on it later. Um, I'm just going to start with talking about the Maggotkin book. Um, I'll, spoiler alert, there is other Nurgle stuff besides what's in the Maggotkin book. But I want it, this is a nice, tight way to start looking at it. And when you start exploring more later then you can do that, but that's other videos entirely. So, the number one question I actually see is, how many feculent gnarl maws do I need? Now, Games Workshop sells a box of three of them. I will say, if you are new to the army, you really just need one to start. Having two to three total once you have a decent sized army and you're getting more into the tactics and different things to try you know it's useful to have more of those available um i probably have oh geez well i've been playing maggot kin since the book came out and i probably have like nine thousand points of nurgle and I only own two feculent gnarl maws. And I think I've only had one or two occasions where I was like, man, I really wish I had a third one of these. It doesn't come up a lot. Um, and, you know, some of the builds where you could use a lot of feculent gnarl maws, they're not really that great. So, you know, the one feculent gnarl maw is really good. A second one is great because it gives you that run in charge. So you can summon in another feculent gnarl maw right where you want to do a run and charge later in the game so you're kind of buying a run and charge with contagion points next most common question uh demons or rot bringers and the basic answer is there's merits to both and it's just a matter of how you like to play the most competitive lists go heavy on rot bringers. And I will say that running a lot of demons can be a negative play experience for some opponents uh, because they are very defensive. And defense tends to be a negative play experience for opponents. So if that's something you care about, keep that in mind when you're thinking about uh, the demon side of the army because some of that stuff is just damn near impossible to kill um demons generally are fairly weak on the offense they're very strong on the defense they're the part of your army where you get more numbers um, and they're also something that you just kind of want to have around because that is your summoning pool for your army when you're using your contagion points to summon up more units they're all demons so you want to be able to have those plague bearers and plague drones ready uh to pop those on the board when you have enough contagion um, a lot of lists frankly are mixed between demons and rot bringers there's nothing that says you can't mix the two uh and again as i'll talk about later you can mix a whole lot more than that uh but Mixing demons and rot bringers is very common, um, especially something like, you know, building a list that's mostly rot bringers and then you add like a great unclean one and, you know, maybe a couple of units of plague bearers, uh, just little things like that. Anyway, let's move on. Your basic army composition. There's really like four units that are the staples of 
army building. Your plague bearers are your strong defensive anvil unit. Typically, you want to run the maximum unit size of 30. They're great for holding objectives. They get a good body count on there. They're 32 millimeter bases, so you can get a lot of bodies within that six inches of an objective. They can spread out a lot to block areas off of the board. So there's a lot of use for plague bearers. They're generally a good unit. Sometimes they're a bit underutilized because of the comparison to Blight Kings. Blight Kings are, I think, one of the best values in the game for a unit. Like, overall, all of Age of Sigmar. Like, they're one of the best values. 140 points for five guys... They're strong on offense, they have good defense, they have 21 wounds for 5 guys, um, and 140 points, and you can throw them in the Blight Sis Battalion and give them all Rend, and they're, it, as I mentioned, their offense is strong, they're just an all-around unit, you know, they also get plus 1 to run in charge, so they can be pretty quick, when you add in a feculent gnarl maw that lets them run and charge and add in you know the cycle of corruption giving you a possible plus two to your movement and another plus three to your movement from uh, a great unclean one like the, they can also get really fast so blight kings in general um tend to outshine a lot of other things in the army. There's a lot of competitive builds right now that are running tons of Blight Kings, especially since they just got a point reduction. They are a very strong unit. Um, I actually, after the points got dropped, I bought 15 more. Um, I had 30 already. I went up to 45. Uh, the Blight Sis Battalion is really strong. It gives all of your Blight Kings Rend, which they don't have ordinarily, and Nurgle doesn't have a lot of access to. Um, then we got our Puskoil Blight Lords. These guys are not that popular. I would love to make them popular. I own more of these than I probably will ever need, but... I think they're really great utility units, especially if you're combining with a Lord of Afflictions as your general. You can use his command ability to add eight inches to their movement, and then, you know, you have the run and charge capability, so they can hustle their way basically all the way across the board in one turn. And they're a really strong anvil unit. They're uh, 14 wounds for 190 points, which doesn't seem like that great of a deal, but they have a 4-up save and a 5-up ward save, and they have the potential to heal themselves. So they're going to grind a lot. They're really good for getting in your opponent's way. And they fly, and they can, with you know all of your movement buff, uh, combinations that are available in Nurgle, they are pretty fast, and they have base movement of 8. Your Plague Drones, these are the last option here. Uh, the other three units that we talked about already, those are all battle line. So you're going to be running some combination of Plague Bearers, Blight Kings, and Blight Lords for your battle line. Most likely, you're not going to run the Blight Lords either, because your Lord of Afflictions has to be your general if you do that, to get them to be battle line. So, most of the time, it's going to be Plague Bearers and Blight Kings. Your Plague Drones, though, those are another good option. They have decent defense. They have the 8-inch fly move, just like the Puscoil Blight Lords. They're a little bit more punchy on offense, potentially anyway, than the Puscoil Blight Lords are. Um, and they have some strong synergies going on. So they're 
a pretty solid hammer unit. You know, honestly, I like the Pusquale Blight Lords for a hammer unit as well, but I think the drones generally do that job better. Um, so these are really your four options for, you know, the main troops that you're going to be looking at purchasing, picking up for your initial, uh, army that you're getting started. Now, all of these can be found and start collecting boxes, which is really convenient. And we'll talk about that more later. So for heroes, here's just a quick list of things that are really good um, heroes to have around. Lord of Blights, you need for the Blight Cyst Battalion. Um, and his command ability also makes your anvil units even more tanky. Um, he, uh, makes enemy units minus one to hit that unit in melee and minus two to hit in shooting, um, if there's 20 or more models in the unit. So if you have a unit of 30 plague bearers, they already have that ability. So it makes them minus two in melee and minus four to hit in shooting that is going to make for some very difficult to move plague bearers your harbinger of decay he gives out a seven inch aura of a five up ward save to mortal units so that is going to be your blight kings uh, lord of afflictions he's a great utility unit he loves to carry a rust fang around to uh give enemy units minus one to their save uh he gives re-rolls he buffs the movement of your pus coils. um he's a great little bit of utility and he has an eight inch fly move and he's pretty tanky i believe he has eight wounds on a four up five up save um gut rot spume one of my favorites he lets you ambush a unit of putrid blight kings so gut rot spume and the unit of blight kings they deploy in reserves at the end of the first movement phase they come on the board within six inches of the edge of the board more than nine inches away from the enemy this is a very powerful thing to do um and the tactics of gut rot spume i'm not going to get into that much um that's kind of, again, that's another thing on its own. I'm going to try and not go down rabbit holes and keep this tight here. Um, but I think you can see the obvious utility in, you know, getting that hero to drop a bunch of Blight Kings in behind enemy lines. It's really good. And Festus the Leech Lord... He has a really good spell. It uh, just makes something minus one to save for the rest of the game. Um, and then he can also, he is a Rotbringer wizard. So he can take the Blades of Putrefaction spell, which is one of the best spells that Nurgle has available. Uh, it gives um, an ability to one of your own units... Um, uh, sixes to hit do mortal wounds. So that is very powerful, especially in combining with a bunch of other things. You can get just your sheer count of attacks way up. So you'll get a lot of sixes to hit. So it, it's a really good spell. He, he basically, he gives you access to two really good spells. And so with that, he's really great to have around a great addition to your list. And then our monsters. These are actually pretty important things here in a Nurgle list. Very frequently, you're going to see one of these guys hanging around. Um, the regular old great unclean one um, with the Doomsday Bell and Bile Blade is a really great support character. Uh, strong magic, very good anvil. 
just can go get up the board, get in the way, muck things up, has good magic, access to good spells, the Bile Blade gives him plus one to cast, the Bell makes everything move three inches faster within seven inches of him. Um, it's really strong. He has a very good command ability as well. It gives plus one attack to all melee attacks on uh, one of your demon units. So that combines well with your uh, plague drones and your Pusquil blight lords. Um, each of those has three or four different melee attacks per model. So, you know, particularly, like, let's look at Plague Drones. They come in units of three. They have three different attack profiles each. So they're getting an extra nine attacks for one command point on one unit. That's very strong. And then combine that with... They get an extra nine at attacks for having another Nurgle Demon hero within seven inches of them. And then you can cast Blades of Putrefaction on them and do a whole bunch of mortal wounds. And all of a sudden, like, they're a really powerful anvil unit because you're combining a bunch of buffs together. Um, the Sword and Flail build is... That is your melee offensive build... It is not the typical thing that you see in a list um, other than a thricefold befoulement list when you're using three great unclean ones. Usually you're going to build that out with one great unclean one with the bell and bile blade and then one sword and flail and then one would be Rodicus. The other great thing about the generic Great Unclean ones is that they can take artifacts and command traits, uh, which is very powerful in general. It just makes them even better. Um, our other build option for a Great Unclean one is Rodigus. Um, he has, you know, the same defensive stats as the generic Great Unclean ones. He has pretty good melee. And he has a really strong spell. So Rodigus is a really good choice in general. Um, he does mortal wounds with no range restriction on his spell. So it's a very useful thing to have. If you get that off a couple of times in a game, like all of your opponent's five wound heroes are going to be dead. Um, the Glotkin... This is one that I think might be a little bit underrated right now. His spell is really strong and his command ability is really strong. Uh, his command ability gives units near him uh, plus one attack across every one of their attack profiles in melee. And then his command ability um, adds... Oh, I'm sorry. The command ability adds plus one attack... His spell adds one wound to each model in the unit until your next hero phase. So it dramatically makes a unit more tanky if you can get that off. He also casts two spells a turn. He's a rot bringer, so that gives him access to Blades of Putrefaction as well. He's actually pretty good in combat on his own. Like He has some good offensive stats. Um, he has a high wound count, but he doesn't have a ward save. So that is um, the big thing that makes people nervous about taking him, is that he is a, he's more fragile than a great unclean one is. But there's some great uses for that. You know, having him backing up a unit of plague bearers or you know, a unit of uh, Plague Drones, Pusquil Blight Lords, Blight Kings, um, just really ramping up the attack count that you can get out of that is really strong. And if you combine it, especially with some of the things outside of the Maggotkin book, it gets just bananas strong. So... Glotkin is 
um, I think a great choice and a really fun choice, especially. Um, and the model is probably one of the best models that Games Workshop has put out for Age of Sigmar. It's a gorgeous model. So it's a great fun way to get into really like get into painting Nurgle. Um, there's a lot of really good painting opportunity there. All right, things for beginners that they can kind of skip. Nurglings and Beasts of Nurgle are other troop options for you. They're really just not that good, and they're not, they're definitely not worth their points, even with repeated points reductions. So I'm not going to get into them too much. They're just, they're underpowered. They don't really take buffs very well. They're just not that great the magath lords uh morbidex orgots and um bloab they're all generally kind of weak they're awesome models and i say this and i own orgots and bloab but i digress i also collect the army on top of just you know, playing it. So, and I love the models. So they're fun to paint. But they're not really strong. They're underpowered monsters. They don't have a ward save. Their abilities are not that strong. Um, you know, if they were a little bit cheaper, you know, maybe you could start making an argument for some of them. But right now, not so much. Sloppity Bile Piper and Spoil Pox Scrivener. Uh, their abilities are just weak. They don't really do that much for you. And it's really disappointing. Like, they're not good in melee. They're not overly defensive. They're just kind of there giving you abilities that are not that exciting. Horticulous Slimux. That's another great model that you kind of don't really need. Um, there is an argument that you could make that because he's planting another feculent gnarl maw on the first turn and you're getting those contagion points over the course of the game, that's like effectively giving you more points from the contagion. So that's kind of like Horticulous costing less points. So if you kind of think about it in that way, he's a pretty decent deal but i think in practice he's just not really that good and he would require you to go out and buy another feculent gnarl maw and if you're just starting out like that's just not a thing that you need to be worrying about one feculent gnarl maw is fine and you know if you want to try out horticulus later grab more feculent gnarl maws have at it uh, Epidemus, the tallied man of Nurgle. Um, some people actually like him. I'm not really a big fan personally. I think his abilities are just not impactful enough for the points that he costs. Um, and you have to do a bunch of stuff first. You have to do a bunch of killing before you get any abilities out of him. So I think he's one that you can definitely skip once you're a more seasoned player and start playing around with different lists and collecting and buying models, you know, maybe one to try out, but um, for the new player starting out, he's definitely not like a staple that you want to have in your collection. So a sample list for you. Um, this is something that I threw together with keeping in mind budget and um, putting together a list that is uh, some variety, some, you know, various different units and really taking advantage of the start collecting boxes as well. So start off the list with a great unclean one, big awesome centerpiece model, um, and is very good. Um, Lord of Blights, he comes in 
the start collecting maggot kin box and you need him for the blight cyst battalion which i've included here uh i've got a lord of afflictions he also will uh come out of a start collecting box um he can he's an alternate build of a pusquail blight lord then Poxbringer herald of nurgle is an extra wizard for you he's not one that i brought up before he's uh the the third uh nurgle herald um this one's actually good he's a wizard he comes in the demons start collecting box um he's nice to be able to grab an extra spell an extra cast um and an extra uh hero to have in your list as well for battle line units uh, i've gone a unit of 10 putrid blight kings three units of five putrid blight kings and then a unit of four Puscoil Blight Lords, the Blight Cyst Battalion, and that comes up to 1,990 points and 164 wounds, which is a whole lot to chew through. Uh, basically, what we're going to do with this list is your Blight Kings are your kind of all-around units that you're going to be using. Your Puscoil Blight Lords are sort of a... a they're kind of like a mobile anvil unit, and they're objective grabbers. They're general utility. Uh, your great unclean one is going to be great utility overall. You're probably going to use him to move your uh, cycle of corruption pretty frequently. Um, Lord of Afflictions... You know, he's got the Wither Stave on him, so he's going to be making your opponent re-roll hits of six in melee against you. Um, so, overall, I think this is, a, a, like, a nice, well-balanced list. And uh, over on the next slide, we'll talk about uh, what purchasing this list would actually look like. So, you'd need a Feculent Gnarl Maw and a Great Unclean One. Um... Three start collecting maggot kin boxes will get you the bulk of the list. Uh, and then I've also included one start collecting uh, demons of Nurgle start, uh, in here. That is going to give you your pox bringer, and it's also going to give you a bunch of plague bearers and plague drones for summoning. And then you'd need two more boxes of Putrid Blight Kings. So retail price, this comes up to $664. Um, and it's a really solid uh, starting list, I think, for a new player. It gives you some variety, some interesting things to paint. Um, it gives you a whole bunch of Putrid Blight Kings, which are... You know, you're really strong units that are going to be utility and you're going to use all the time. It gets you some demons, which you need for summoning. Um, and, you know, of course, you also get the Great Unclean one, which is just a fun model to paint. Uh, a really strong piece and option to have for your list overall. All right, so... Now that we've looked at the sample getting started in Nurgle, this is now where we're going to talk about the portal into other things outside of the Maggotkin book. Um, I just wanted to tag this in here because I think there's, like, this is something to kind of think about for growing your army. And... Um, some alternative avenues to build your army, some alternative avenues to get your army started if you already have another Chaos army. So, of course, we have our Maggot Kin of Nurgle. That's your basic demons and rot bringers. Um, out of Slaves to Darkness, any unit that can get a Mark of Nurgle can be included in this army and it's not treated as an ally and it, it maintains a lot of synergy with a lot of the other pieces that you have in the army same thing again with skaven clan pestilence stuff all has the nurgle keyword 
So once again, that can be included in a Maggot Can army without being an ally. Plague Monks can definitely be an interesting addition to a Nurgle force. In Beasts of Chaos, the Pestilent Throng Battalion can uh, give the mark of Nurgle to a whole bunch of Beasts of Chaos. Um, you get access to most of the stuff in that book through that battalion. Uh, and its base cost is not really that high. It's an interesting option. The main thing the battalion really does is give everything the mark of Nurgle. Uh, so uh, I haven't seen a lot of people really have success with this. But it's certainly an option that's out there for you. And then as well we have Tamurkin's Horde. Which is a Forge World army. Which is just a bunch of alternate Nurgle stuff. Um, there's You can go get PDFs for the War Scrolls. There are also the War Scrolls are in the app. Um, they're mostly demons. Um, they're just extra stuff. Personally, I don't think they're that good, but it's in there. Uh, also, from the Wrath of the Ever Chosen book, we got uh, our sub factions, our hosts of Nurgle. So that's a good resource to pick up for some additional rules for the army that are a really good supplement to uh, what's already there. They're not totally necessary, but they're some nice additional options. Now, out of this, what I'll say is an interesting way into Nurgle is by way of Slaves to Darkness. You can build an entire Maggotkin army only with Slaves to Darkness units. And I think that's going to be a video I'm going to do at some point is... Like, I've already done a video talking about Slaves to Darkness in Nurgle, but I think I want to go more in-depth and say, you know, here's how you can build a Nurgle army that can be played either in the Maggotkin book or the Slaves to Darkness book, whichever you prefer. Um, and that will be, you know, some good synergy and the lists will, and units will work well in both. Um, I think that would be a cool project. It's something cool to think about. There are some great unit options in Slaves to Darkness. I'm currently working on building out my own collection of Slaves to Darkness that are all going to be bearing Nurgle marks. I'm probably going to pick up the book at some point as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of options. This is just kind of some food for thought for later on down the line. For newer players, I definitely just recommend sticking to what is in the Maggotkin book to get started. And the rest of this stuff is things to keep in mind for future projects. So, as always, like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching if you have made it this far. Um, and always remember that you can support us on Patreon, 100% of our proceeds go back into the channel to improve content. So we thank all of our patrons for their donations. And that is going to wrap up the video for now. If you have any more uh, questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And I'll talk to you all later.